binary search is a concept that has a lot of applications. One such problem on lead code, search in search position, explores some of this domain. You are given a array of sorted integers and a target element. If you can find this target element in the array, you need to return its index. Otherwise, you need to return the index. Where will this element go if you try to insert this element in the sorted array? So, let us see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will go over some sample test cases. Next, we will try to look at one of the most straightforward ways how you can approach this problem. Going forward, I will tell you how to think about an optimal solution and then Eventually, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand all of this and it stays in your mind forever. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let us try to first make sure that we understand the problem statement correctly. So, we are given a sorted array and a target element. Now, if this target element is present in the array, we need to return its index. Otherwise, we need to return the index where this element would be inserted in the sorted array, if you have to insert it. So, let us quickly look at some test cases to understand what it actually means. Let us look at our test case number one. I have this sample array. These are all my elements and these are the indices of the array, right? So, one is at zero index and six is at index number three because arrays are zero based indexing, right? Now, the target element given over here is two. So, what you need to do is, you need to first search if two is present in the array. You can't find two anywhere in this array, right? That means you have to insert it. And you have to insert it at the correct position in the sorted array. So, what do you do? You start from the first position, C1. One is smaller than two. So, nothing to do. Go ahead and you see the element number 3. Now, 3 is greater. That means 2 has to come where between 1 and 3. And if you have to insert this element, it will go at index number 1, right? Only then it will come after 1. And hence, for test case number 1, this will be your answer. Similarly, let us now look at test case number 2. I am taking the same array and this time my target element is 1. What do you need to do is, you need to find this target element in this array. You can find this element over here, right? And what is its index? Its index is 0. So, for test case number 2, you need to return 0 as your answer. Because you were able to find this element. Similarly, let us look at our test case number 3. Once again, our array is same and our target element is 4. If you try to search this element in the array, you cannot find it, right? So, what you have to do is, you have to insert it at the correct position. If you see, 4 should come somewhere over here, right? Between 3 and 5. So, what is the index after 3? That would be this index, right? And this would be 2. So, if 4 gets inserted between 3 and 5, that means at index 2, then it will be at the correct position. So, in this case, 2 would be your answer. Now, if this problem statement is clear to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let me show you what solutions I can offer. Let us say I have the sample array in front of me and I have a target element 16. Now, before optimizing the solution, let us do a straightforward approach what comes to your mind. The first approach that comes to my mind is that since this is a sorted array, the smallest number would be on the left side and the largest number would be on the right side. Correct? So, if I try to traverse my array from left to right, then I should see the elements in that order, right? Smaller to largest. So, what I can do is, I can start from the leftmost side and compare each element with my target element. I see that 
2 is smaller than 16. So I will move ahead. 5 is smaller than 16. Again move ahead. 9 is smaller, 11 is smaller, 15 is smaller and then I see 17. So now you stop over here. Now think about it. If your target element would have been 15, then you would have found 15 while going through the array, right? And then you can simply return this index as your answer because you need to return the index of the target element, correct? But you were unable to find 16 in the array, right? So where do you insert the element 16? It should come right after 15, right? So it should come somewhere over here. That means after the index 4 and after the index 4, the next index is 5. So in this case, 5 will be your answer. That means you have to insert the element 16 at position number 5. Now this method works and it will give you a correct solution every time. In fact, it works in an order of n time complexity. But According to this problem, you need to find a faster approach. What can you do about it? Let us try to see that. Let's say I have this sample array once again and this time my target element is 9. Before trying to think about optimizing a solution, think about what you are trying to optimize. Right now, the time complexity that we just had was order of n, right? To make this program more efficient, what could be a time complexity that is smaller than order of n? And that would be order of log n, correct? And whenever you see a time complexity of log n, the first thing that should come to your mind is the binary search algorithm. Because a binary search algorithm works on the divide and conquer strategy, correct? It will divide the problem into two halves at every step. And then you can arrive at a solution. This dividing will give you a log and time complexity. So let us try to apply the binary search algorithm in this question itself. For a binary search algorithm, what do you have? You will have three values, right? A high, low and a mid. So currently, when you start performing binary search on this array, the value of high would be 7, that is the last index, and the value of low would be 0, that is the first index. And to proceed with binary search, what will you do? You will find the middle value. Right now, the middle value, let's say, is 3. So mid is 3. What do you do then? You look at this middle value. I find the value 11 and compare this value 11 with the target element. Since the target element is smaller than 11, that means that you can discard this part of the array, correct? So this will narrow down your search range. Now you only have to search in this half of the array. What does that mean? It means that you can change the value of high and the new value of high would be 3. That means we are looking in this sub array now. Once again, perform a binary search. Your low is at 0 and your high is at 3. Once you find out the middle value, that would be 1, correct? Now look at this middle value, it's 5 and compare it with the target element. 9 is greater than 5, correct? So once again, you can narrow down your search and only look in the right sub array. That means the value of low will change from 0 to 2. That means you are only looking in this sub array. And if you perform binary search on this array once again, you will be able to find out the target element and it will match. So you can simply return the index 2 as your answer. Right? Now think about if your target element was 10 instead of 9, what would you have done then? When you were iterating through this array and when you were performing a binary search, you always found out two boundaries, correct? Initially, it was 0 and the last element. Then you shortened it. Then it was 0 and element number 3. And then going ahead, you even shortened it to these two indices, right? So this way, 
you are shortening your array and this will give you a log n complexity. If you cannot find the element, let's say in this case, you couldn't find the element number 10, then you have to insert this element somewhere, right? Now the value of low is 2 and the value of high is 3. You know that 10 will come between 9 and 11. So what you can do is you can simply return low plus 1 as your answer. Because this way you can be sure that the element that you're trying to insert will be in that range. Now let us quickly see how you can do a dry run of this code. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample array and this target element, which I will pass in as an input parameter to my function. Oh, and by the way, the complete code and its test cases are available on my GitHub profile. The link is in the description below. So to start a binary search, what do we do? We initialize the low and high parameters, correct? So low gets initialized to zero and high gets initialized to four. Then it's a very basic binary search algorithm. So you will start a while loop and then you calculate the middle value. Your middle value will come out to be two. Then you compare this middle value to your target element. If this matches, well and good, you simply return this index. And this will be a case when you are returning the index of the target value. If not, what do you do? You need to update your boundaries, correct? Right now, the middle value is 5 and your target element is 4. So you need to search in the left sub array, right? You will need to search in this part. That means you are updating the value of high to be 2. Now this while loop will run once again and it will try to search for the target element in this sub array. Moving on, it will again find the middle value and that will change to 1. Once again, you will see if mid equals to target, it does not match, right? So once again, you will try to update the boundaries. Once again, this loop will run and you will be unable to find the target value. So this time again, you will update the low boundary to mid plus 1 and this changes your value to 2 and you come out of the loop. As soon as you come out, you return the value low and this will be your answer. So you are inserting the element at position number 2. The time complexity of this solution would be order of log n. And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because we are not using any extra space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, take a moment to realize how we took advantage of the binary search algorithm. That is why I always say that whenever you're learning a new concept, let us say you are learning about the counting sort algorithm. It doesn't necessarily mean that this algorithm will only be used to sort some elements in an array. Similarly, when you are learning about the binary search algorithm, it is not necessary that you will get a straightforward question that, hey, solve this question using binary search or can you find an element using binary search? You need to understand the concepts. You need to see what elements are being used. In this question, for example, we took advantage of the high and low pointers, right? You got a range and using that range, you could narrow out your search target, correct? Similarly, try to understand these fundamental concepts. They will surely help you out. What other methods did you think of? What problems did you face? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website to help you out with your programming needs. I am including a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what you want to learn next, or rather, what problem do you want me to solve next? I'll certainly try to help you out. Until then, see ya.